We've assumed that the ocean is too big to fail. We've assumed that we can put pollution into the ocean and it'll just go away and not come back and won't build up. But what we've learned over the last uh, 50 years is that the ocean is finite, that there are limits to what it can absorb. At the moment, it's showing all the signs that it's on wobbly legs. How is it trying to tell us? Like, what are the signs? It's an ocean which it hasn't been this warm or changing temperature for thousands of years. And we're seeing a change in the chemistry of the ocean that has no parallel in 65 million years, if not 300 million years. You're looking at an experiment we've been running over the last 12 months, and this experiment has been exposing uh, parts of coral reefs to uh, warmer and more acidic oceans. Although they look well, when you actually look at the process at which they build their skeletons, it's all proceeding a lot slower. And they've almost got a form of osteoporosis. Right. And what you see here is that uh, most of the corals are dead. Any coral that survived is bleached. Wow. You can it's see that. Dramatic, yeah. frankly. Oh my God. This to me looks like death. Truly shocking. It's truly shocking. In the Caribbean, uh, it's very clear that we have lost probably 80% of corals since the 1970s. Um, Hold on, 80% of the corals in the Caribbean are already gone? That's right. I think you can safely say that we've probably lost 40 to 50% of corals across the planet in the last 50 years. Yeah. Within 20 or 30 years time, you don't have coral anymore. To be clear, if we continue down, even the current path, if we just continue as we're going right now, coral reefs will cease to exist by mid-century of this century. Yep, 35 years from now. Here's right. the kicker. The changes we're making now to the ocean won't be reversed by natural processes for the next 10, maybe 20,000 years. So the experiment we're running right now is going to be with us for 300, 600 generations of humans.